Hello, welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Paul, and today I'll be demonstrating how I align the mirrors and input beam to configure a Harry itself. For today's demonstration, I'll be using a red fiber coupled laser source with a power output of less than 2 milliwatts, two 200 millimeter focal length concave mirrors and kinematic mounts, where one of the mirrors has a through hole near the edge to allow light to enter and exit the cell, a fiber collimator, two irises, and a beam splitter cube which I'll first use for alignment, and a second fiber collimator in a kinematic mount, which will send light into the cell. Before I perform the alignment, let's look at how the Harriet cell works. In a Harriet cell, two concave mirrors face each other. Light enters through a hole in one mirror and reflects back and forth, creating a reflection pattern on both mirrors. The multiple reflections enable Harriet cells to achieve long optical path lengths within a compact space. Long path lengths increase the interaction distance for small samples, which can increase the signal to noise ratio of the measured signal. The mirrors also refocus the beam after each reflection to keep the beam divergence low within the cell. However, some power is lost after every reflection because the mirrors are not perfect. Typically, the mirrors are first aligned parallel to each other after setting them a specific distance apart. In this case, the mirrors have the same focal length and are placed one focal length apart. With this mirror spacing, the reflected pattern provides three reflections on the far mirror when the output beam is not clipped. Adjusting the input beam to create three equally spaced reflections along a single line aligns the input beam parallel to the cell's axis. Increasing or decreasing the mirror separation by a fraction of the focal length provides more reflections. Adjusting the angle of the input beam creates an elliptical reflection pattern and further adjustment of the input angle will create a circular reflection pattern. Okay, let's start aligning the cell. I've pre-aligned my mirrors so that they're at the same height where the mirror with a through hole is in a fixed post holder and the solid mirror is on a translation stage to allow me to adjust the cell length. I want to set the mirrors one focal length apart. I'll use the dovetail clamp on the stage to set the mirror distance to approximately 200 millimeters. I want to ensure that my mirrors are as parallel to each other as possible and aligned to the mounting holes on the table. This will keep my reflection pattern aligned to the mounting holes in case I want to place components in the beam path later. It will also ensure that I can change the number of reflections within the cell while maintaining approximately the same output beam path by changing the distance between the mirrors. I've previously aligned these irises to be at the same height as the center of my mirrors, placed them along a line towards the center of my cell, and pre-aligned my laser to travel through both of them. The alignment beam with non-polarizing beam splitter cube and irises setup can be anywhere within the cell, but aligning near the center of the cell maximizes the sensitivity of the alignment of both mirrors. Now I'll turn my laser on, block the reflected path from the beam splitter, and adjust the angle of the cube to ensure that the Fresnel reflection from the front surface of the cube passes back through the iris. Now I'll move the beam block to the other side of the cube and use the pitch and yaw adjusters on the first mirror to ensure that the reflection from this mirror also passes back through the iris. With that mirror set, I'll remove the beam block from the system and adjust the second mirror so that the reflection passes through the second iris and while I'm doing that, I also like to keep an eye on the first iris as well. Now that I've aligned my mirrors, I'll turn off my laser, remove the beam splitter from the setup, 
and move my patch cable from the alignment collimator to the input collimator. At this point, I consider my mirrors aligned and will no longer adjust the angular position of my mirrors. The remaining alignment will be limited to the input angle and position of the light source and the distance between the mirrors until I get the desired number of reflections and reflection pattern. I eyeball my collimator mount to a neutral position so that the front and back plates are roughly parallel. Turn my laser back on and adjust the base to ensure that the beam enters the through hole roughly in the center and make sure it is not clipped upon the entrance. If the horizontal angle is kept close to zero, we can see three reflections on the second mirror, giving us six passes through the system. I now want to create a zero reference position for both the angular and spatial positions of the input beam. The pitch adjuster changes the relative distance between the top and bottom spots compared to the middle spot. When the three points are equidistant, the input beam will be traveling parallel to the table. The yaw adjuster translates the middle spot left and right. When the input beam is horizontally aligned with the screw holes in the table, we have a line of three equidistant spots on the mirror. Translating the horizontal position of the input beam will rotate the line slightly about the center of the mirrors. Translating the beam in the vertical direction changes the length of the line. Now that I have a reliable starting point, I can move forward optimizing the pattern to suit my application. First, I'll increase the number of reflections within my line pattern. I'll start by creating a large vertical angle into my cell. I'm clipping at the top of my entrance hole, so I need to bring my beam down. As the angle increases, the middle spot and bottom spot come closer together. If I would like to have an even bigger vertical angle upon reaching my adjuster's limit, I can use the third adjuster to push out the bottom of the mount. This changes both the pitch and yaw, so I need to use the yaw adjuster to minimize the horizontal angle again. Now I have a reasonably large vertical angle into the cell, but because I have not yet changed the distance between the mirrors, the beam still exits the through hole on the sixth pass. To get more passes, I need to change the distance between the mirrors. I will get many more passes in the system as soon as the light in the sixth pass moves enough to reflect from the mirror rather than exiting from the cell. The pattern forms a line since I only adjusted the input beam's vertical angle. I can fine tune the position of the mirror so that the beam is not clipped. If one of the reflections is clipped on the through hole, there will be incomplete reflections in the pattern. To avoid this, make sure none of the reflections are clipped by the through hole. It's important to note that it looks like I have seven reflections, but if I add a small horizontal angle, we can see there are actually 13 reflections. To create a more elliptical pattern, we need to introduce a larger horizontal angle to the input beam. I'll iteratively adjust the angle and position adjusters to keep the input beam from being clipped by the through hole. Increasing the mirror distance further will decrease the number of passes through the system before the beam exits. The maximum number of complete passes in this configuration can be found by decreasing the distance until the beam closest to the hole clips. Then I'll use my micrometer to bring the mirrors back. If additional passes are needed, then a larger input angle is needed in either the horizontal or vertical directions. To create a circular pattern, I need to go to a more extreme horizontal angle. By loosening the mounting screws on my base, I can push the input collimator to access more horizontal translation range. By loosening the flexure mount screw, I can rotate the post to allow even more horizontal input range. 
At some point, I will achieve a circular pattern on the mirrors. I hope this will help you in the lab someday. If you have any questions, please contact tech support.